argue with that. Juan Camillo Ronderos taking on Clayton Carpenter. Carpenter coming in at minus 262. Ronderos plus 262. Over under set at two and a half rounds. Plus 147 for the over and minus 147 for the under. Uh, Camillo, Juan Camillo, four and one in his last five because he's only had five professional bouts. Five and oh for Clayton Carpenter, six and oh in his career. A couple of young fighters, flyweights here. This is greasy as it gets, too. I mean, you look at the, the weight classes in the UFC, flyweights are greasy, heavyweights are greasy. And in this one, it's just only gets greasier. Like Juan Camilo Ronderos comes into the UFC uh, on short notice against David Dvorak, gets subbed in the first round. If you look at his other four fights, uh, decision split decision win in 2019 uh, in his last uh, his fight before that to Eric Shelton, who had been in the UFC. I thought he complete. I just watched it today. Like I, I thought he completely lost that fight. I don't know how he won that fight, but got the win nonetheless and gets a shot in the UFC. A couple of chokes on his record, so two wins by submission. Overall, it's just not that impressive. I mean, he's five foot four. Doesn't really offer too much on the feet. Really looks to to grab a hold of you or something like that. Like I don't know. Just watching him on film, I just don't see a lot of strengths to his game. Um, for Clayton Carpenter, I don't know what to think of him. I mean, watching him on the Contender series, he looked pretty hittable. He fights pretty wild. Uh, maybe that's just because he was on the Contender series and he wanted to make a statement. Uh, and get a finish or something like that. But he left himself open a little bit. He had a huge welt under his eye. Uh, he he will look for the takedown, though. That's that's really what he, he looks for the, in the most part. But when he starts the rounds, or when he starts round one at least, I mean, he comes out swinging. Uh, kind of settles into it a little bit. But, yeah, it, it's kind of like the same position you're in as far as like low level heavyweights it's like i just don't feel good laying chalk like that uh, against for for low level flyweights i mean these are two entry level dudes and two dudes that i don't really see having a future in the division um but carpenter fights out of a good camp mma labs so does ron darrow's at straight extreme couture so both guys are fairly young as well I'll give them that. Maybe they're still f- tuning up their their skills. Both guys mid to late twenties, but at this price, I just would not feel good about uh, either side. I I think Carpenter is the pick for sure, but like, how confident can you be? Uh, you know, he's sitting at minus two sixty two, so it's not terrible. But I just wouldn't really want to lay the chalk on on that. I just don't – Ron Darius doesn't really do it for me very much. You have more upside with Carpenter. He's a rightful favorite, but I just still don't feel good about it. What about you? No, I'm on the same side. Like, these guys are so inexperienced that anything could happen in any one of their fights at, at this level. But, you know, just watching – kind of comparing them side by side, Clayton Carpenter, the aggressiveness, I do think he could come out from the beginning of the fight and kind of overwhelm – Ronderos. I think Carpenter is a guy that has maybe more upside and potential and a guy that we could see get better, like in those gaps where he's not fighting, you know, just got to win on the contender series. Now he's time to lock in and get ready for the UFC. Um, so I think we could see him just start sharpening his skills every time we see him in the octagon. Again, a guy that from MMA labs is young enough to where, you know, all of these fights, he's going to learn something in. I bet he learned a lot in his last contender series fight and just, he's going to use that going forward. I just, I think the upside for him is a lot more. I think the UFC wants Clayton Carpenter to win over Ronderos. I mean, you would think there's more marketability there. Um, So yeah, I I just, I think he's going to come out there with the pressure. He's going to overwhelm him, get the takedown. And I do think on the ground, and on the feet, I do think there's a slight skill gap just from like watching both of these guys pass fights. Ronderos has some good submissions, but I mean, the competition he fought, you know, especially early in his career to get those first couple of wins, it wasn't really the greatest or the highest. I guess the same could somewhat be said for Carpenter, but just comparing the two side by side, man, I think Clayton Carpenter is a rightful favorite. Maybe not this big because it's, you know, these guys are so inexperienced, but uh, yeah, for the pick, it's got to be Carpenter. 
I do think he could find a, a finish here too. I don't think Ron Darrow's is, you know, this guy that's indestructible and, you know, can't get finished. I think he very well could. I think he very well could in this fight. Um, sake of the pick, got to be Clayton Carpenter in my opinion though. Yeah, I mean, if you like Carpenter, uh, I would probably take him inside the distance. Could get it done either way, but maybe uh, better off with a KO prop. Over, under, I mean, that under, flyweight unders, flyweight unders just seem to, like, be pretty good. They just seem to be the way to go.